pretty. I'm, I like to keep it not too tidy because um, I'm constantly working in here. I use a studio very much like the way a sculptor or painter uses a studio, you know. You have to mess, you know, you have to mess around. I'm constantly changing the space and a, a bit of advice. It is important, imperative, if you're going to be a musician or a composer or whatever you want to be, to have a space that you can inhabit. When I say inhabit, you know, I leave more of my soul in this space than any other place at the moment. And I'm grateful that I can. So what I mean with inhabit is that you got to feel free to play and mess around and be shamelessly creative. One of the most important things that I like to talk about more practically in today's uh, workshop is this idea. It's simply called learn while you play. A lot of times we are taught by various um, teachers that, uh, and, and institutions that, you know, this idea of mastery, that you have to master things. And um, First of all, to play an instrument is called to play for a reason, in that there's freedom in playing. Okay, so this idea of to learn while you play, it also like, um, it also relates to composing, you know. In composition, it's important. Ah, well, and most I'm times I find what, I, what I'm composing because I am, I'm playing, you know what I mean? I'm playing around and most compo composers will tell you that, you know, they'll hear themselves playing something and then stop and that's basically my process and I like to encourage people to see the idea of to keep it light. The idea of playing is lightness, you know, you want to keep it light so that you, what I would like to call, so that you can go on flights of fancy, you know, fascinate, you can fascinate yourself. <laughs> As a musician, I feel that all of us, and it doesn't have to be this, but we need to more and more, you know, couple our media or team what we do with other, with other media and other mediums. For you, perhaps, it might not be this. It could be working alongside dancers, as an example, or to to incorporate that, you know, or you could be like a, mus a jazz musician and go, <laughs> I always want to work with rappers, for example. That's not a big jump because some it's been done, but it can be that simple is what I'm saying. You know, it's important to find those things that interest you and that can also intrigue and fascinate you and, and put, put a beautiful spin on what you're doing, you know. Because my videography certainly all it does it it is it emphasizes my my playing, you know the performance. It's more angles. The the you know the viewers kind of it's kind of intrigued by what they see and by what they hear. explain what's going on here. So I've, at the bottom here I've got my looper and um, I use the looper to extend the piano, if you know what I mean. <laughs> You know? Okay. 
set this up is that now it's, it's automatically switching cameras and angles. It's a video environment really that I've made for myself in order to perform. And I, I love videography because I've always been into it. And it just so happens that it's something that now becomes, you know, with YouTube and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's become important maybe. But coming back to what we spoke about um, with the music, it flows from a, a, a real love. You know, it's also helped me to, to live in my studio in a nicer way. I've got more tactile. Um, besides composing, I have to be more practical. I have to be hands-on with, with all the gear and know the cameras and do trial and error. And I enjoy that. it inspired you to be playful and um, and I hope to see you in that beautiful spirit of play sometime soon in performance thank you so much <laughs>